welcome back to Japan, where I am happy. This is my happy face. All right, now, as you guys know, this is a review of the new song About Us that has just come out as an audio-only version. I'm sure they'll trip me up later with a video. Um, if you haven't already, obviously check out before listening to this review. You'll be able to find a copy on your whatever streaming service you choose. Um, it is on Spotify. A big thank you to the Facebook group Band Made uh, Fans Cafe for there where I actually saw this come up and a big thank you to everyone on my Discord who probably has already linked this to me but I didn't quite see it yet. Um, look, why do I like this song? Now I'm going to go into breaking down the details of that in a minute but for anyone who knows this channel you probably already knew that I was going to like this. Now I know that we've got a lot of people who have been very kind about the fact that we've checked out every single band made song ever including you know like the live rare ones the b-sides every single album track we've been through the whole lot um but usually when i do these reviews i do sort of see the comments where people say well yeah howard he, he likes the poppier stuff and this was an issue that i came up with slightly when i was going through unseen world because unseen world was obviously a very very heavy album even though like i say i do really like that album you guys knew that one thing i wanted to see was a bit of variation now like i said i will talk about the details of this song in a minute but first of all i want to talk about the importance of this song and why i do think it is actually really important now it starts off straight away with the piano really heavy sort of contemporary style production i mean in all fairness in pop terms the sound they're using is probably about five to ten years a little bit out of date but still it's kind of a contemporary pop sound that they're going for it's got piano in there it's very very different from unseen world in every single way i can kind of see why this was so different from unseen world that even if they recorded it during those sessions they would have kept it apart it does kind of sound like it was being done with a completely different producer however now so this could be something for a different project it could be linked up to like most japanese uh, isolated singles it's the theme tune for something I don't know, but I need to talk about this song because of the fact that, like I say, it has a real relevance. Now, so many people, when we went from Conqueror to Unseen World, I've seen so many comments where people were basically saying, uh, yeah, Conqueror is okay, Unseen World is such a huge step up. And as a lot of you knew, for me, I personally, Conqueror is probably my favorite album than thus far. It's not to say that it is, uh, doesn't have its problems. It does have its problems. It has serious problems in the mastering department. It's way over compressed. Um, there are certain areas where thanks to the compression and a slightly muted mixing of uh, Mises work, Mises gets pushed out a little bit. Um, sometimes the beat don't, beats don't land as well as they should do because of some of the issues with the mixing. But it's something where I love the writing. I love the bravery of it. Now, is this song exactly what I was looking for? I don't really know what I was looking for. I was just looking for something different. I walked out of, and I was actually saying on our Discord, really only today, I walked out of Unseen World saying, you know what, in retrospect, on first listen, I was kind of waiting all the way through. As you can see, if you check out the track by track review, I was waiting all the way through for something different to happen. And what we instead got was very different versions of heavy rock. Um, I kind of described it myself as Conqueror was like seeing them stretch their arms out wide. Whereas, um, Unseen World for me was more like them taking the box that they'd started their career in and filling out every last corner that hadn't been discovered, you know, really sort of discovering their quintessential rock sound to its fullest rather than breaking out in any particular way that took them to somewhere new. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult. I can see it from both sides. But when I look, like I say, I look back on Unseen World as this is a positive thing. I like it. It's great. Just personally, as I said in my final review, it didn't really so much wow the certain want i wanted for a, a change into different genres uh, i think i said quite a few times that i was actually excited about maybe they just just do like a jazz track because they're such tra talented musicians that would be a cool thing to hear especially a jazz track with misa on and i think the ends of manners kind of gave a little bit of a feel that they could even do that as well uh, well they definitely could do it but that they might do it um, on this track, then, what we get is something which is definitely more contemporary pop. It's not pushing any of the members musically to their fullest. But what it is doing is it's showing that Bandmade can work in a different sound and that Bandmade have an interest in a different sound. The fact that this came out completely separate from Unseen World, like I say, it might be connected to the fact that Unseen World itself um, was just too different for this song to fit in. Or it could be that they wanted to soften up the fans by saying, look, here's an album of what we know you want. And then, okay, you guys happy? Okay, because we're just going to bring in this. Just have a quick look. Just keep on seeing more. Just have a quick look. You okay with this? You okay with this? Here we go. We're just going to leave this with you. Still okay, right? I think it's kind of like that. Um, there is an air of that as well. You can kind of hear that... Um, 
I mean, I'm assuming that this probably signifies that they're done with all the music videos that are coming out off the back of Unseen World. It's, it's quite possible. Um, the last one, which I really liked for Afterlife, was kind of low budget. So it kind of gave the air of, okay, we've used up the last of our budget now on this director. But um, to me, this feels like a really... It's a, it's, for me, it's really uplifting because, like I say, as much as I loved Unseen World, I listen to this and I think, okay, this shows that the passion that the band have for variation, for pushing themselves outside of rock, because they can do more than rock. Nothing wrong with being a rock band, but if you can do more than rock, you need to do that. It's still there. And one of the biggest reasons is because there's a phrase that I've been using increasingly more ever since Unseen World came around, which is that I want the bands I like to challenge their fans. It's important. It's important to challenge your fans. Partly because if you don't challenge your fans, then it makes it difficult for you ever to do anything different because they will decide that what you do is clearly what you like doing, you don't want to do anymore. I'm not saying this for all fans, but there will always be some of them who will be so comfortable with your sound that if you do something different in the future, it really puts you in a situation of them thinking that you've sold out when in actuality it was something that maybe you wanted to try for a while but didn't feel you could. Um, it's good to always be challenging your fans. This song kind of challenged me. This is, like I said, this is a start. I like poppy sounds. This is a style of pop that I'm not necessarily 100% into. I did like this for a couple of reasons. So I'll talk a bit more about the song. Um, it didn't have a big catchy hook, which you'd expect from this type of pop usually. It was kind of catchy, but what mainly worked about this is it had a very nice sound. I like the fact that although um, it sounded a lot like Conqueror, um, it wasn't compressed to a point where it didn't have impact. The beat really pushed through here. Whereas in Conqueror, the compression landed a lot on the beat and on the bass. Here, the, um, the beat was turned up to a loud enough point that Akane's drum work, which was fairly sort of um, followed a pattern, but had some really lovely beats in it, especially the second verse of some great stuff. There's some great beats, great feels, but it was turned up loud enough that it was loud enough to overcome the compression and still punch through. It had good EQ to it as well. The bass was down there low to make lots of room for the bigger sound, which, like I say, when you've got higher production music rather than raw music, usually the bass has to move out the way a little bit. But I liked the fact that the bass, again, was turned up enough that when there was those cool little bits of Mesa work, you could hear them. They weren't as in your face as they were on some of the tracks in Unseen World, but they did come through. They were something that you could hear the awesome bass work happening. Um, the guitar work, admittedly, was quite um, muted in this, but like I say, different style of songs, you know, different people make different room, you know, not every song has to be about every musician. I did, however, love what I'm assuming was the work from uh, Konami on doing kind of like a cool little guitar riff, which was kind of linked in with the production. It had like a looped feel. Maybe they had looped the guitar riff, I don't know, but I really liked the way that was done. I thought it gave it a sort of a nice, it was a nice bite to it. It felt like you still had that guitar feel, but it was very much in with the pop sound as well, which was Again, great. In fact, that might have actually, because there was piano in this song, that might have well have been Miku playing that. I don't know. Um, as always, I think that um, when you've got a sort of big, powerful voice like Psyche's, like, it kind of works in everything. You know, like I say, she could do jazz, she could do pop, she could do rock. It would kind of sound okay for her to do anything because she's got a very full sounding voice. So it was nice to hear her voice sounding so well matched to something so different. Is this my ideal choice? It's maybe not like the perfect song that I would go for. Is it better than every song on Unseen World? I don't know. There's some songs on Unseen World that I really love. But does this song make me happy? Yeah. It makes me really happy to hear this. Because what it means is as much about them doing something different that I can listen to and can give me something different. If I want to listen to a band-made playlist, it doesn't all have to be kind of rock. You know, or go back and find something older to listen to what i get here is i get something that not only does that not only gives me something cool and new for my varied band made playlist but also gives me a hope that these you know they're, they're not just about hey let's be rock because people like rock and i'm never gonna i never was saying that they were 100 percent like that but you'll see no one knows we can all pretend to know about these bands we can all pretend to sort of read what we uh can into their social media posts but we don't really know what they want that kind of comes out in their creative output um and to me this just sort of demonstrates that as much as they are a rock band they do want to do other things they don't want to upset their fans but they do want to do other things and when they do other things you know what they do them pretty damn well. I like this song and I am looking forward to sharing 
the remainder of my beer, I've got a little bit more. <laughs> I'll pop another one open. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing that with a little bit more of this song. I'm going to give it a good few re listens, I'm sure. It covers that sort of almost five minute playtime really well. I think that's a lot because of the fact that it has a lot of intricacies in it. Yes, it's not sort of blasting you with constant um, impactful intricacies and you know, nuances of musical particulars and instrumental particulars, I should say, as Unseen World did, but it is constantly shifting things up. It never gets boring. It never gets overly settled. It uses its pop credentials to make an interesting rock song. It's just well-rounded and I like it. Might not be the catchiest pop song ever, but it has that effect. You know, everything sounds thick, rounded, interesting, and it's just nice to hear something so completely unexpected. I want to be surprised. I want to be challenged as well as impressed. Unseen World impressed me. Well, this challenged me. I am a very happy reviewer. All right, so there you go. Those are my thoughts as always. I'm sure this is going to spark a lot of different opinions. So get in the comments. Tell me what you think. I'm sure that even if you weren't such a fan of this song, you probably appreciated the fact they didn't put it on Unseen World. I know a lot of time bands, when they put experimental songs onto an album, they get a lot of people complaining, this album was good except that track. So um, I'm sure a lot of people appreciated that. But please get in there. Tell me what your comments are on this, what your thoughts are on it. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. As always, feel free to do the liking and subscribing. It's greatly appreciated. As especially our, our Patreon supporters, you guys do keep us going. Like I say, we're non-monetized. So thank you so much. A big thank you to you for making through to the end of this video and hopefully i'll see you in japan J japan japan soon for the next one of these until then for now though ciao ciao